What's up, guys? Hi. Thanks for being here. You know, the entire nation is celebrating our entry to the Oscars. This time, it happens to be a Gujarati movie called Chello, the last show movie. What is this movie all about? Well, it's the story of a nine-year-old kid named Samay and his love for films and how he passionately falls in love with movies. And so very apt as we celebrate National. Cinema Day. Uh, with me on the show right now is one of the editors who's worked on this movie, Pawan Bhatt, one of the most talented editors out there. Pawan, welcome! Congratulations, buddy! Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, really a pleasure to uh, be on the show. I've been following your show since forever, <laughs> and uh, it's it feels awesome to be part of this. No, I, I'm, this is such a proud moment for everyone here. Uh, the amount of work, the amount of sweat that's gone into this movie is simply incredible. By the way, this movie has already won its accolades in plenty of international film festivals and forums. Uh, but to tell you a little bit about Pawan, he is someone uh, who is multi-talented in the movie industry, freelance film editor, video editor, also a filmmaker based out of Mumbai and Bengaluru. Uh, he's actively been involved in the ad industry, making documentaries, also music videos. He's a computer engineer, and he also holds a diploma in filmmaking from Whistling Wood International in Mumbai. Uh, not only the last film show, but he has worked as an editor, including films such as Basmasur by Nashil Seth, Nirmal Anand ki Puppy by Sandeep Mohan. In addition, he also is into teaching as well. He served as a Editing professor at Miami Ad School, Mumbai, and Dice Vancouver Film School in Mumbai, Pawan. This must be such a proud moment for everyone. Talk to me about what the vibe was when you got to know that the film has been selected as India's official entry to the Oscars. Uh, well, uh, I think the first emotion we all felt was surprise. All our team members were, you know, very pleasantly surprised. To be honest. Because of course, like we didn't have very high expectations, but at the same time, you know, there's this little inkling that you know your film might make it because you've put in all your you know sweat, blood, and tears into it into making the film. So uh, you know, we had this uh, slight feeling that you know why not? Why why not? We might as well make it, you know. But then we we didn't have very high expectations, and of course, we were up, up against really uh, big heavyweights. in the category and it came out as a very 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 pleasant surprise and we were all very joyful and very elated when the news came out now uh, to the uninitiated guys an anatomy of a movie there's so much that goes into it there is the production process of it and then there is the post production process of it pavan is an editor so he gets to sit on the edit table and decide how the movie looks Now, Pawan, talk to me about when this movie came to your edit table and how long the process has been for you on the pros post production table. Uh, actually, funnily, uh, on this film, I was also part of the production process. I was also part of uh, you know the entire production stage, including the principal photography, which is also known as the shooting stage of the film. Yeah. So I was also part of that and. Uh, we spent quite a few months uh, shooting the film in really tough terrains in Gujarat, Gir Forest, uh, and you know Amreli, Lathi, and a lot of different you know like really amazing and unexplored uh, towns and villages from the Saurashtra region in Gujarat. So Panalin is of course the director of the film is a native of that state. He's from Gujarat and was born and brought up there. So this film is actually a semi autobiographical account of his life. and it's more about his passion for cinema so and that's being reflected through the main character of the film samai to be honest so it was quite a hectic process given the weather you know like some of our hotel rooms were flooded and it never rains in that part of gujarat and funnily when we were shooting that year a lot of locations ended up looking very different because of the rains and you know a lot of our places were flooded and you know like it was quite a hectic uh schedule to be honest but we braved it all and we uh, came out with some really nice looking footage uh the principal photography was done by uh, swapnil sonamani and linesh desai they both from bombay and they've done an amazing job there not just them i mean the entire team has come together and you know like really put it together 
I feel. So yeah, I was part of that. And since the uh, principal photography stage or the production stage, uh, right up to the point we are at now, I think it's been a three and a half year journey for all of us. Three even and a half for, years. Yeah, so far. Uh, and even long, of course, not continuously, but on and off. Uh, maybe like a year of intense work and then two more years of on and off duties and work for us. But for the director and uh, the producers of the film, it's been a very hectic and very, you know, like long process. They've been part of this even before the production stage. So to even put these things together, to bring the team together and, you know, like make this film happen, uh, it's kudos to them, you know. It's really oh, wow. like their brain child and, you know, like, I'd really like to thank, you know, uh, the producers, the director and the entire team, you know, like uh, for coming together and making this an amazing experience. Man, that really goes on to show how focused and how uh, visionary the people who are involved need to be. Because come what may, the vision of a film still needs to be executed. Of course, you may have a lot of pivots. You may turn... Uh, take a few deviations here and there, but the end product is something that matters and clearly it's hit a certain sweet spot. Pavan, they say editors have a lot of powers uh, in their hands. Of course, you get to chop things off uh, irrespective of how an actor feels, whether they have performed really well or not. Uh, but how effective is great acting? And you must have a good sense of good acting from bad acting uh, and is it a combined call that you take with the director? Yes, absolutely. That's something we always like discuss as a team uh, because acting again, like performances are very subjective, as you may know, uh, you know, like some people may like certain types of performances, where, whereas others might not. So, you know, that's where the team really comes in and, you know, like uh, discusses these things. And uh, that I think really helps. And also more so the performances for us are more subservient to the overall story or the story that we're trying to narrate. So I feel uh, that's where we would take performance into consideration. You know, performances can be of various types, but what, what drives the story is what matters to us. You know, sometimes there are really great shots in which the actors have performed extremely well, but it might not be the crux or the vibe of the film. So many a times we've had to reject such, you know, like uh, elements. So the actors have come, not in this film, but generally, like I've seen, uh, I've seen like a lot of people, you know, <laughs> uh, complain about editors cutting out some really intense bits. But uh, really, uh, to be honest, it's uh, more so to drive, you know, your storytelling towards, uh, you know, finesse and perfection, I would say. And it's a team, team call, totally, especially with the director at the helm. Okay. Yeah. I think it's his call. Yeah. Blame the director. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, off the record, please. <laughs> also, big Just shout kidding. out. Yeah, big shout out going out to Shreyas Beltangadi as well. Uh, both of you yes, together yes. worked as editors on this. Yes, film. we've both worked on this film and it's been a very, very great experience, you know, because I used to assist Shreyas many years ago. I assisted him on this film called Angry Indian Goddesses. And that's where I met Shreyas. Uh, Pan Nalan and a bunch of really amazing human beings and with whom I've, uh, you know, worked ever since. Not just worked, I wouldn't call it work nowadays. It's more that we jam and, you know, we creatively collaborate on stuff. So it's been like quite an amazing journey, you know, with all these amazing human beings. Right. I so, would call them human beings and not filmmakers, you know, first human beings and then, of course, the filmmakers. So they are like, they're, they're like family now for me. So it's amazing to have worked with them and collaborated with them again on this. Right. Pavan, you did mention that when you're working on the film, you sometimes have a hunch. Uh, did you ever think that this is going to be the film? And when you were working on it, what was your idea? Did you go, this is a powerful film because you were involved in the production stage of this movie and the post as well? Did you feel, man, this is so very exciting that I get to work on this project? Whether it goes all the way or no, it's another day's story altogether? Uh, well, uh, the fact that, you know, like uh, this film uh, is about cinema, you know, had me at the very first word go. So I think uh, when uh, the director of the film, Tan Nalim, told me that it's about the overall, you know, like passion for cinema that he has and he exudes and about his own story, childhood story, you know, more so. 
uh, that really had me fascinated because I've been a, a very ardent fan of Pan Nalin, the director, even before I started working with him or met him, because I'd watched a lot of his films during my uh, college days. And, you know, like I basically wanted to meet this person, you know, for a long time. And it, it was a dream come true, to be honest, to work with someone like Pan Nalin. And when he told me that it's his life story and he wants to make this in, in his hometown in Gujarat, uh, Saurashtra region of Gujarat, I was like, you need not say anything more, you know, and I'm on it. You, whatever you need me to do, I'm on it. <laughs> you know, let's go ahead. So we were really raring to go. And, you know, like uh, it was a long process, the overall shooting process, like I told you earlier. So uh, when things finally came together, of course, we were very excited to uh, view it, analyze it and put it all together. But uh, while working on it, every shot was so beautifully made or, or maybe shot. Uh, we didn't even feel like rejecting any of the shots, you know, that came to us, <laughs> to be honest. We were all awed by the beauty of, you know, all the things that were shot. And Gujarat as such, uh, especially the Saurashtra region, you know, it's untapped and unexplored beauty, you know. So it was really refreshing to see something like that. And uh, I guess when the audience sees the film, I'm sure they'll uh, see something fresh and new too. Uh, let's yeah. at least hope so. Yeah. You know, when you go on the internet now, people are busy trying to get their hands on the film. Now they know that there is a movie called Cello and how does one get to watch it? I'd say it's releasing in select cinemas on October 14th. Make sure you catch it there. After all, it is India's entry to the Oscars and there's so much of work that's gone into this movie. Now you're getting to know about all of this. Uh, kudos once again, Pawan. And uh, I must say, I'm someone who's known Pawan for so many years. Um, I have known him from when he was a little baby uh, and to now uh, being part of this project. Uh, you're someone who stayed true to indie films. Uh, whenever I've met you as well, I've asked you, wow, will there ever be a crossover? Uh, but you have stuck to your guns and it must feel great to see a movie go up to this level. But Pavan, even now, will there ever be a crossover or are you going to keep working on independent films? I think uh, for me, life is independent cinema and vice versa, I guess. So, of course, this is what keeps me motivated as a filmmaker and as an artist and as a creative person and also as a technical person when I'm editing. So, I feel uh, if I stay true to what I love and what I admire, I think uh, it, uh, you know, I can do wonders probably. So, this is where I'm coming from. But Sure, like I'm always open to options and, you know, like I'm always looking forward to new and interesting explorations and, uh, uh, you know, creative experiments. So I'm always open to things, but independent life is my, uh, you know, like is my major, you know, like calling, so to speak. So I think that's what I'm going to stick to. And like you said, I've stuck to my guns and I'm glad it's like, uh, you know, helped me in the long run. It's been a long and arduous journey, but to be honest, you know, to have reached this point, it's a big thing for not just me, my family and like everyone else, you know, who's known me for all these years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very uh, warm and proud feeling, to be honest. Right. Pavan, uh, there is one side to the movie industry where there are plenty of conversations happening about Bollywood doesn't have it anymore and South films seem to be rising and conversations of that nature. And when it comes to parallel cinema, we see some incredible movies. And it's a shame that not everyone may get exposed to movies and brilliant work that's happening side by side here. I've always seen you admire movies such as Tumbad. And there are so many other films out there. Uh, are there a couple of movies that you may want to recommend to people and talk about people whose work you admire in indie scene? Uh, well, there are a lot of indie filmmakers that I admire. Uh, of course, we have uh, filmmakers that I've personally worked with and I would recommend any day to any film buff out there. Uh, I've worked with directors like Bhaskar Hazarika, uh, who's made some really amazing films like Kothanudi and Amis. And then we have Reema Das, who's like a one-woman army. And she was India's official entry to the Oscars in 2018, 1718, before yeah. the Village Rock Stars. So uh, I've also had the pleasure of working with her uh, on her films. And of course, we have Sandeep Mohan, who is a one-man army and who's worked on films like Danny Goes Home 
and uh, Nirmal Antivapi that I've edited myself. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of interesting filmmakers. We have uh, Aditya Vikram Sen Gupta. We have Kaushik Mukherjee from Kolkata. We have uh, many interesting indie filmmakers. I'm sorry, I cannot probably go on naming because there are a lot of people I admire and would love to, you know, like uh, probably explore. Uh, but uh, I think it would be unfair if I just keep uh, uh, naming, you know, a few and just ignore the rest. So I'll probably <laughs> just say that, you know, like whatever like suits you and whatever like inspires you is probably what you should go and check out. And indie cinema is that it's a treasure house of content and you have a lot of interesting and independent, you know, filmmakers in the country, even from some of the lesser known towns and villages who have made some amazing stuff out there. So I would totally recommend, you know, the film audiences to be a little more open-minded when it comes to consuming uh, all types of cinema. Because sometimes, uh, you know, it's uh, it's popular belief that something that's out in the media is what is popular and what is cinema. But then there are also a lot of different, you know, and unknown films that need to be explored and that need to go out there to the audience. So I feel... Uh, I would also request the audiences, you know, to probably give it a little bit of effort. And of course, uh, uh, we as filmmakers also need to be a little more uh, proactive when it comes to putting out a uh, word about our films. So I think it's a combination of both. It's a collective sort of responsibility of both the audience as, as well as the makers to ensure that there is some sort of a meeting point, so to speak. Right. You know, uh, one of the... Uh, chief heads uh, who was involved in officiating and sending this movie as India's entry to the Oscars mentioned that movies such as RRR uh, or any other movie was not even close. Uh, however, celebrating National Cinema Day, this had to be the choice for the amount of beautiful work that's gone in. So I can't wait to watch Cello the last film show. So really looking forward for this. But Pavan, now that you've reached this stage, I think we are all keeping a close eye on the Academy Awards 2023. Yes, I'm, sure, I'm sure <laughs> plenty of conversations have already gone in on your WhatsApp groups and conversations. But if you guys see it through till the very end, it must be something else altogether. We are gunning for you. Let's hope for the best. But Thank you once again for spending time with us and kudos on the brilliant work that's gone in. Anything that you may want to share about your team that's worked on this together uh, and just um, the lead up to the Oscars must be so very anxious altogether, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, are, we are totally uh, excited. But at the same time, you know, like uh, maybe nervous isn't the right word, but we are like, gunning for it in some way but also we know at the uh, uh, at some point uh, we'll have to put our best foot forward to make sure that uh, you know the film reaches the audience that we might deserve so uh, the film is of course releasing on the 14th of october in selection and as you pointed out so it would really be a great thing if the audiences could go there in numbers and watch the film and you know like talk about the film spread some buzz about the film and you know like uh, generally, uh, you know, share their opinions and maybe critiques on what they felt about the film as such. Uh, that would really go a long way for independent filmmakers and uh, in general, I'm saying, not just for this film. Uh, so I think I'm really anxious and looking forward to uh, the audience's response and reactions on the film. Uh, and I don't think there's a bigger platform than the Indian theatrical release. OTTs are always there, but the Indian theatrical release has been a different experience, you know, for all filmmakers. And that's what a lot, lot of filmmakers aspire for, to see their films on the big screen. So I think it's great that we are getting like a platform and we have uh, Siddharth Roy Kapoor, who's uh, basically distributing the film in India under his banner and it can't get bigger than that because to for, for a person like him to put his trust on our film, and to actually, you know, like support us wholeheartedly, it means a lot to us, the entire team, in fact. Uh, so I'd love to thank all the team members, all the team members who have worked on this, who put, uh, you know, like a lot of uh, effort and a lot of, uh, you know, work 
really wholehearted work again for the last uh, three and a half, four odd years, some even longer. Three and a half years for most people, but a lot of other people have maybe, maybe worked longer on this. So, you know, it's finally come together. And uh, and after like having a really good run at the festivals, international film festivals and winning major awards and even releasing theatrically in numerous countries abroad, uh, I, I'm so happy to finally see the film in India, <laughs> you know, because nothing can probably replace that feeling. I bet. Well, hoping for the best, Pavan, but Thank you so very much, brother, for spending time with us. Thank you. Look forward to catching Thank up you. with you. Take care. See you soon.